Well, hey there, and welcome to 1027 again. My name is Pastor Joe Meyer. I'm a senior pastor, lead pastor of Gloria Day Lutheran Church in beautiful Urbandale, Iowa. Thankful to be with you this morning. Uh, I got to talk about today as we we continue again. You know, you know my thing as we continue to grow in our faith in Jesus together. Uh, in these uh, podcasts, we. Uh, uh, continue to uh, be nurtured by the Word of God so that we uh, can grow in our faith in Jesus and live a life that is uh, not only glorifying to God, but also is beneficial to the people that we encounter every day. Uh, We're going to talk about something that, again, is near and dear to my heart uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, not the least of which is that I've been a pastor a long time, and I say that Uh, in the sense that, uh, boy, have I uh, experienced a lot of death in my ministry. Uh, I have seen a lot of people go through the death of loved ones uh, over and over and over again, uh, experiencing that which all of us will experience at some point in our lives. And uh, really, that's the other part of it, is that I have personally experienced death, uh, the death of loved ones, the death of friends, and uh, this came early in my life, uh, well, actually earlier than the experience I'm about to tell you, but uh, I remember when I was in just third grade, my bestie in the whole world, my bud, uh, Hank was his name, who Hank could have been uh, my twin brother, we look so much alike, uh, but Hank and his dad, it's kind of wild to think about this now, uh, but they were in a Cessna in a small airplane, and that airplane crashed, and uh, Hank and his dad were both killed in that plane crash. And so I experienced it early on, actually earlier than that, in the sense that, uh, as most of you that know me know the, the story, the backstory that my brother John drowned in our pool when I was just about three years old, three and a half years old, and I witnessed it. I watched it happen, and um, that, that memory is burned into my into my brain. Uh, My brother Kevin died of leukemia before I was born. Uh, My sister Beth just recently died. She uh, succumbed. uh, She was uh, only 46, but she was a a Downs girl, and so her body was much older than chronologically uh, her age. Uh, My mother has passed. My father has passed. Uh, um, I've had aunts and uncles pass away. Uh, My grandparents are all gone. Uh, I really only knew well uh, one of my four grandparents, and then I really only knew at all uh, one of my uh, four great grandparents, uh, Nettie Lou Warner. In fact, the the mother of my grandmother that I knew well. Uh, so I've experienced a lot of death, and so I've also uh, noticed something about people, Christians and and non Christians alike, mind you, but primarily Christians because this is. This is my gig. It's what I do for a living is I I train up. I'm the shepherd of the sheep. I train up other Christian people. But I notice that people really struggle with this death thing in a variety of ways. As as people age and they begin to see not just their, their parents passing, but their siblings and their peers passing, they begin to feel the mortality uh, that is that is on our, our lives. And uh, yet, uh, you know, people experience death all over the map on this thing. Children and siblings and grandparents and great-grandparents, etc. Friends and co-workers. Uh, uh, tragic deaths and just quite normal uh, people are old and they pass away kind of deaths. But I've noticed something that, that people struggle with. And, and it's this idea of realizing that if the person is a Christian, if they are a believer in Jesus Christ then when they die, they're not dead, as we say it, but they are quite alive. I've said this in other podcasts, by the way, but this one is about this subject. Uh, and so I want to take you someplace, because because of some of the posts I've seen on Facebook, one, and two, uh, because I'm, I'm recording this very early on a Friday morning, uh, because at 4.30 this morning, I was at the hospital holding the hand of one of our, our faithful members, uh, whose loved one is passing away. And so it is fresh on my mind, it's fresh on my heart. And so I want to share with you a passage that, uh, interestingly, I posted on Facebook at about 4.20 this morning. And at 4.21, I got a text from this member saying that their loved one was passing away. And so uh, I want to take you to, to John chapter 11, the famous Lazarus, Mary, Martha passage where 
Lazarus passes away and Jesus proves his power, proves that he is the son of God, proves that he's God in the flesh, frankly, uh, by raising Lazarus from the dead. So I'm in John 11, verse 17. Uh, John writes this, now when Jesus came to Bethany, that is, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now John's going to make a parenthetical thought, an er editorial thought here that is important Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. Now, he's going to tell us that, or he is telling us that, because the Jews came to the friends, that is, of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, came to console them. But he also tells us that because Jesus could have gotten there and, uh, as Martha would say, it saved Lazarus from dying. Now, that's not completely true. I'll explain that in a second. So, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. Many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha, or Martha and Mary, to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. She was pouting. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. That's not true. Because you see, Jesus intentionally allowed uh, Mar uh, Lazarus to pass on for his glory, to give glory to God and to show who he was. Jesus could have gotten there. He could have saved him. That is true, but that was not God's will. All right, so, so Jesus fulfilled God's will. Verse 22, but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha thinks he's talking about the second coming. So she says, I know he will rise at the resurrection on the last day. For that information, by the way, check Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, that's probably... I'm going to guess, I don't know, but that's probably where she got it. And so Jesus says, no, no, wait a second, Slick. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, and these are important words, yet shall he live. And then he says, he speaks of the second coming, I think. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So in other words, if you're alive at the second coming, you'll never die. You'll be like Elijah or Enoch, the two in the Bible that just lifted off the earth and went into heaven. All right, so this is the important part, Christian. Are you grieving the loss of a loved one? Or are you considering the possibility that that's going to happen in your life at some point in time and thinking how sad you will be? All right, so if you're in either one of those camps, and all of us are, you need to hear Christ's words here. The the words, again, that I posted on the, on the uh, Facebook, on Facebook, just before I got a text that a loved one was dying, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. Yet shall he live. We hear those words and we recognize what they mean. Jesus means to say, if you die believing in me, you're not dead, but you are in fact quite alive. In fact, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, Paul, Paul gets at that uh, uh, very thing. He, he says this, we are always of good courage, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6. We know that while we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're of good courage. And here you go, Christian. We'd rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Why? Because that's our place of residence. When we go there, when we die, that's 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and following. When we go there, when we die, we're not dead. We're alive. And if you're, if you're suffering under the, the weight of grief, you need to hear those words that your loved one is alive. In fact, listen to what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are dead or those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. Why does Paul say that? Paul says it this way, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so since we believe that, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in him. More than that, though, I'm going to go back to what Jesus said in John 11. If your loved one has died, they're not dead. If they're in Christ, if I, I can only give you hope if they're a Christian. If they are a Christian, they are quite alive and they are with Jesus Christ living the life that God intended them to live all along. Praise be to God they're not alive, uh, uh, not dead, but alive. Praise be to God that they are with him, right? And, and that is what helps us in our grief. Notice Paul did not say we do not grieve. 
He said, we do not grieve like the rest of men. We grieve, we just do not grieve like the rest of men that have no hope. Please understand, your loved one's not sitting on your shoulder. They're not hanging out on earth. They, they're, they're not overseeing you. They're not controlling your destiny. But they are, in fact, and this is the most important thing, alive with the Lord Jesus, living the life that God always intended. I hope that that helps you. I know that it helps me as one who has experienced much death. May it help you. May it do so. In Jesus' name.